St. Charles is an upscale Chicago suburb about 35 miles west from downtown and I couldn't have picked a better day to have visited. St. Charles is located right off of the Fox River. It's got a couple of river boats as well. It's got a neat little downtown area and the area is surrounded by really wealthy subdivisions. Nonetheless, let's get to it. After getting told to stop swimming in the Fox River by the local authorities, I realized that I probably didn't want to be swimming in a river anyway. I mean, unlike other places, there's plenty of things to go do and see in this town, like appreciating this art mural on the side of this building. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like what you see here can be found in my Chicago suburbs playlist or in my Illinois playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. The last building that you saw on the left was the Baker Community Center, which provides event space for locals such as weddings or theater performances. Today, St. Charles is known as an upscale Chicago suburb, and as you look around, you can kind of tell that. However, before there was ever a community here, or the miles and miles of suburban expansion, this land was once occupied by the Potawatomi Indians. After the Black Hawk War in 1832, American settlements started to take over the land. The first settlers of St. Charles are thought to have been Evan Shelby and William Franklin in 1833. Initially, the area was called Charleston, but to avoid confusion with the already city of Charleston, Illinois further south, the name of St. Charles was given to the new city in 1839, which is the same year that St. Charles incorporated as a city. Make sure to drop a like for that amazing insight. To the right is Thompson Middle School, one of the two middle schools in the St. Charles Community School District. The school district serves an area bigger than St. Charles itself, extending west into Campton Hills, north towards the southern border of the city of South Elgin, and east a couple of miles into DuPage County. St. Charles is located in the far eastern central portion of Kane County and a very small part of the city limits actually extend into DuPage County to the east. Kane County is one of the only counties in Illinois to see population growth since the 2010 U.S. Census counts. Meanwhile, St. Charles is expected to see its first population loss in quite some time as the city has grown in population by double-digit percentages between every census count since 1940. This is all due to the taxes that the state imposes on its residents, especially the property taxes. Okay, yeah, just kidding about that one. I know I riled up some of you Illinois faithful. This is actually most likely due to the fact that St. Charles doesn't have any more land around it to annex into its own city, as it's surrounded by a dozen or so other suburbs that have already annexed most of the land, along with most of St. Charles already being fully developed. It's likely that the population of St. Charles will stay around just what it is now for decades to come, which is 32,000. The median household income here is $98,000 per year, and 48% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. 
the poverty rate is a low 4%, and the median value of owner-occupied housing units is $293,000. Niche.com gives the public schools here an A+, and the crime rates here are basically non-existent. The biggest negative of living in St. Charles is the cost of living, as the housing prices are higher than average and property taxes in St. Charles, just like many places in Illinois, are through the roof. Most people here are willing to pay those costs, however, as St. Charles is a suburb that offers its own identity with the Fox River and the historic downtown district. Illinois property taxes are its own different story, but most metro areas in the U.S. have fancy suburbs like what you see here that have a higher than average cost of living. Can you ever go on video in Illinois without lecturing us on the state's property taxes? That's not even the reason why. Haven't you ever heard of the cold weather exodus to the warmer states? First off, no, because it's highly believed that the high property taxes are the main reason why Illinois has lost 18,000 residents since 2010. Before the numbers came out, official estimates show that the state was going to see a drop of 150,000 residents, but those official estimates proved to be way off. It was a population loss nonetheless for the state, and I have a hard time believing that the loss is due to the poor weather as all other cold weather states saw net population gains. Plus, Illinois is in the worst fiscal position out of all the states in the country. The only other states to see a net loss since 2010 were West Virginia and Mississippi. Plus, look around. Illinois can have beautiful weather here at certain times of the year. Let's not allow that troll to ruin this video though, as St. Charles is a beautiful city and a great suburb of Chicago to live in. Chicago has many great suburbs, as the economy of the metro area is not only the third largest in the country, but it has the third highest gross domestic product in the country at over $600 billion. With that, you're going to have plenty of upscale places to choose from within the metro area. Even with the population of the Chicago metro area expected to see a population loss of 60,000 since the 2010 census count, the economic output of Chicagoland will likely continue to be a mega powerhouse for lifetimes to come. While talking about the Chicago metro area is definitely relevant to St. Charles as it's a small part of the metro area, a very small part of that, I'll be talking about St. Charles for the rest of this video. The building to the left just a second ago was a former elementary school called Shelby Elementary School and was constructed in 1911. Today it's used as office space. The city of St. Charles has three historic districts. One is the Central Historic District, which is the largest of the three spanning both sides of the Fox River. Essentially, the entire business district in downtown plus several blocks more. We're currently in it now as I speak. The other two are the Moody Millington Historic District and the Millington Historic District, which we passed through earlier along 6th and 7th Streets. Those two other smaller districts were likely set in place to preserve some of the older houses. The Central Historic District was designated in in 1995 and includes the original town that was laid out in 1839 when St. Charles incorporated as a city. Going back to the early days, the first industries in town were lumber mills and water wheels that were powered by a dam built along the Fox River. The Underground Railroad was present in the city, helping free slaves from the south. A good portion of the original settlers of St. Charles were immigrants from Belgium and Lithuania who came looking for work. One of the manufacturers here in the Industrial Revolution era was the Cable Piano Factory. St. Charles was essentially its own city without Chicago's help when things started out here. Historical satellite photos suggest that Chicago's suburban expansion didn't capture the area surrounding St. Charles until the 1980s. As we head through on Main Street, you'll see how downtown St. Charles is full of life and offers some nice recreational options, whether it's a walk, bike ride, or jog along the pedestrian paths that follow the river on either side. Kayaking is a nice option along the river as well, and there's plenty of places to shop and eat. Not all suburbs offer downtowns like what you see here, so it's nice for a suburban community to offer these amenities. Other suburbs nearby also offer the same types of amenities, basically any suburb off of the Fox River.
This building on the left is what pops up just about any time that you do a search for St. Charles, Illinois. This is the St. Charles Municipal Building, which was constructed in 1940 and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1991. Additionally, cat a corner to it at the Main Street and then First Avenue intersection was the location of Illinois' first medical school, which opened in 1842 as the Franklin Medical School. However, that's no longer here. It was on this side of the Fox River, the east side, that the city of St. Charles was first platted. To the left is Baker Memorial Park, where the first block of the city of Charleston was originally settled. Yes, you heard me right, and if you missed it, earlier I mentioned how the town was originally called Charleston but was renamed to St. Charles as there was already a city called Charleston in Illinois further south. That's where Jimmy John started and it's also where Eastern Illinois University is located. You know the school where Tony Romo and Jimmy Garoppolo both played their college ball. I have a video on Charleston, and you can find it through my Illinois playlist or through my USA College Towns playlist. Or, simply, if you're on a desktop PC, you can click the link that I have below for my interactive map and find the link for the video that way. I mean, seriously, this is still a young channel on YouTube, I get it, and I only have about 2 million views across the entire channel so far, but I only have 25,000 views on this interactive map. Very helpful tool if you're curious on where I've made videos on. I keep getting questions on a lot of my videos asking comments on whether or not I've been to certain places. All you have to do is go to this map and then type in a search for whatever place you're curious on and then you can find out that way. Anyway, now back to the video. Currently, I'm still on the east side of the river on the block south that parallels Main Street, and currently I'm heading towards the river. Like I said before, plenty of things to go do and see here, including a nice selection of places to eat like you'll see along this street. This is the second time that you've passed by the theater and haven't said anything about it. How dare you not mention it? I understand you being annoyed by that, but down below I have attached timestamps like I do for every video and I'll talk about the theater later when I pass through on Main Street again, the opposite way that I did last time. YouTube is awesome in a way where you can skip to the part of the video that you want to see. Calm down, okay? Next, I continue to head north towards the Potawatomi Community Center, named as such after the Native American Indian tribe that occupied this land before the Black Hawk War kicked them out and allowed for European settlement to take over. And here we are, you can see that there are a couple of riverboats here as I pointed out in the intro of this video. These are the St. Charles Paddle Wheel Riverboats and boat rides have been offered here ever since the 1940s. These boats that you see here were built in the 1980s. Now going back towards the same way that we came, along this stretch of 2nd Avenue there are some well-kept older homes that overlook the park and the river to the east.
And to the left here is the Arcada Theater, which was built in 1926 when the town had only 5,000 residents. Live events here are held to this day, and the theater has a seating capacity of just under 900. You can see that just behind the theater appears to be a couple of nice places to go out and eat, so you can get dinner and a show at a nice convenience. Throughout this video you've been able to see that there are a lot of people out and about, that's most likely due to the fact that it was 80 degrees and it was essentially the first nice summer-like weekend of the year when I filmed this video. Also because St. Charles is a pretty nice city to go out and walk around in. Now I head north quite a ways as we've basically seen all of the old town of St. Charles. 30 minutes of driving in 17 minutes, not bad. If you've enjoyed seeing this town so far, whether you used to live here a while back or you're curious about the place and have never been here, make sure to drop a like if you haven't already as doing so helps destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Trust me, it's evil. And it would be much appreciated by me as I put a lot of effort into these videos as I try to give you the best insights on what each place would be like and hopefully this video is a good research tool for you in deciding where you'd like to live or it satisfies any curiosity that you had on the place. But yes, next I head towards the far north side of the city towards St. Charles North High School. And as you could probably guess, this is St. Charles North High School, home of the North Stars. Among the most well-known alumni is Jeffrey Austin, who is a singer and was a contestant on The Voice. The school was originally built as a middle school in 1995, however it was converted into a high school in 1999 to provide St. Charles with a second high school. I do head towards St. Charles East High School later in the video. We're several miles north of downtown St. Charles and you can see that there are even more recreational trails up this way. This trail is a part of the Fox River Bluff West Forest Preserve, while across the river is the St. Charles River Trail that starts from here and heads all the way south towards downtown and is a part of a larger trail system that extends even further south to nearby downtown Geneva.
The rest of this video will mostly be going through the boring suburban parts of St. Charles, but you'll see some wealthy subdivisions. Only a few places are left of note on this video. If you're interested in seeing the entire area, however, you can't say that I didn't go to a certain part of the city. Although, I'm sure some of you will still try to say as such. Currently, we're in the northeastern part of the city, and this stretch has quite a few nice big houses. At the time of uploading this video, Zillow only shows a few homes for sale within all of St. Charles that are going for under 200000 The section that I'm currently in has a home for sale that's going for 700000 Dang, looks pretty baller, yo.
Here you can see a section of the river trail between downtown St. Charles and downtown Geneva. It appears as if Division Street is exactly that, the dividing street between St. Charles and Geneva. Pretty simple. It'd be nice if more boundaries were that simple to understand throughout the Chicago metro area. Part of the reason why you see a giant open grass field to the right could partially be due to the DuPage airport being just a mile or so east of here. Not a huge airport, but like most populated areas such as the Chicago metro area, you have your main airport plus a handful of smaller ones like the DuPage airport right by here. At the northeastern portion of the intersection ahead, with Kirk Road and Main Street, is the Charlestown Mall. I didn't get to it in the driving portion of the video, but to my surprise it's a mall that is hardcore struggling. No, this Street View photo wasn't taken during the pandemic. Try 2017. 
I say that it's a surprise to me because usually malls that are in mega metro areas, such as Chicago, seem to continue to do well for the most part, despite what you hear about indoor malls dying everywhere. That likely means that there's another nearby mall that is taking away all of the competition. Looks like there's some decent shopping complexes off of Randall Road to the far west, which we'll get to towards the end of this video. This is St. Charles East High School, home to the Fighting Saints. The school opened originally in 1977 as the original St. Charles High School, and until North was built in 1999, it was the only high school in St. Charles. Before this school was built, the original high school was on Main and 7th Streets, where Thompson Middle School is now located, which I drove past in the very beginning parts of this video. Among the most notable alumni of St. Charles High School and East High School combined include Karen Morrison Comstock, who was Miss USA in 1974, actor Pete Plazek, who had a major role in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Texas Ranger pitcher Wes Benjamin. Here you can see a Coca-Cola bottling facility, doesn't get much more Americana than that. Otherwise, this thoroughfare is littered with car dealerships and chain restaurants just like most other major suburban thoroughfares in America.
Just like that, we're again in downtown St. Charles before heading towards the far western side of the city, the only part that we haven't yet been to. And this appears to be another thoroughfare littered with retail amenities.
In this video, you saw the upscale Chicago suburb of St. Charles. You saw how its downtown area is full of life and has several things to go do and see. I'm sure that if you live here, it's easy to get bored with those places after a few years, but the good news is that you're in the Chicago metro area, and there's plenty of other options nearby if you ever get bored of St. Charles. Overall, not a bad place to live if you're looking to settle down in the Chicago metro area. I do end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you see here can be found in my Chicago suburbs playlist or in my Illinois playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!